Good day, I'm Kodian Barrett and welcome to Frontline Business. Sajikor Group Jamaica and Player Hotels have decided to combine hotel operations. Sajikor Group Chairman Richard Biles said they are investing their hotels in their business and they are getting all of their hotels. In a joint release on the transaction, Sajikor said it would contribute its portfolio of all-inclusive resorts and developable land sites in Jamaica, including the Hilton Rose Hall, Jewel Runaway Bay, Jewel Duns River, and Jewel Paradise Cove, and the 88-room hotel tower and spa, which forms part of the Jewel Grande. In exchange, the group would receive 20 million player shares and 100 million U.S. dollars in cash. Sajikor Group CEO Christopher Zaka said the financial conglomerate's holdings in player would be approximately 15%, making U.S. the second largest shareholder in the company. Chairman of the Exchange Commission, Douglas Mendez, outlined that the staff of the Trinidad and Tobago Securities and the Commission believes that minority guardian holding shareholders have put forward enough to make a case. He said there might have been breaches of the takeover bylaws in NCB Financial Group's 400 million U.S. takeover bid for the insurance company. Kimberly Wright has more. During the expedited hearing, Mr. Mendez responded to an argument made by NCB's lead attorney, Jonathan Walker, to inquire into the Jamaican company's takeover bid and its acquisition of a 29.99% stake in Guardian. The Trinidad and Tobago Securities and Exchange Commission is conducting a hearing into the twice postponed bid by NCB to take control of the Twin Island Republic's largest insurer. In May 2016, NCB acquired a 29.99% stake in Guardian Holdings when it paid two of the insurer's directors, Arthur Lockjack and Imtiaz Ahmad, $3.24 per share for 69.5 million shares. Lockjack and Ahmad received $225.3 million US dollars for selling that block of shares. It was just below the threshold of Trinidad and Tobago's takeover code. In December, NCB made an offer to all Guardian holding shareholders to acquire 74.2 million shares at $2.35 US per share. That would increase NCB's shareholding in Guardian from 29.99% to 62%. However, there were complaints that the offer price was 27.5% less than what was paid to Lockjack and Ahmad for their shares. Kimberly Wright for Frontline Business. And a two-day meeting of Caribbean governors of the Inter-American Development Bank, IDB, on Monday at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel in New Kingston focused on helping the Caribbean to embrace the digital revolution as a developmental tool. The IDB has indicated that it wants to improve the capacity of the region to tap into technology and apply innovative methods as a means to solve problems, improve productivity, generate employment, and advance development. IDB governors are expected from Bahamas, Barbados, Suriname, Guyana, as well as Trinidad and Tobago. In Tuesday's trading session, the JSE Combined Index advanced by 700 points to close at 299,719. Overall market activity resulted from trading in 57 stocks, of which 28 advanced, 20 declined, and 9 traded firm. The Junior Market Index declined by 20 points to close at 2,896. Among the winners were 138 Student Living. Access Financial, Berger Paints, Caribbean Cement, and Caribbean Producers. Stocks declined for 1834 Investments, AMG Packaging and Paper, Burrito Investments, Cable and Wireless, and Cargo Handlers. Stocks traded firm for Caribbean Cream, Caribbean Flavors and Fragrances, Sibini Group, Epley Limited, and Iron Rock Insurance. G West Corporation Limited Ordinary Shares was the volume leader with over 3 million units, followed by Jamaica Producers Group with over 1 million units and Sajikor Group Jamaica Limited also with over 1 million units. On the foreign exchange market, the U.S. dollar is being sold for an average $127.67. 
$98.57 is the going rate for the Canadian dollar, while it's costing $175.67 for the pound sterling and $154.74 for the euro. News in Oil Oil dipped on Tuesday before weekly data forecast a rising U.S. crude inventories. Although investor confidence in OPEC's ability to curb output helped stem the price slide, Brent crude futures eased six cents to sixty-four dollars or forty-four cents a barrel, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude fell twelve cents to sixty-three dollars seventy-nine cents. The American Petroleum Institute releases its weekly figures on U.S. crude inventories later on Tuesday. Stocks are forecast to have risen by 2.7 million barrels last week. And that's it for Frontline Business. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. Regional stories are next after the break.